got mail. Sound matters. Be heard. Welcome to the podcast where you get exclusive behind the scenes tips to make your own show sound truly spectacular. This is Podtastic Audio. Hey, what's happening? How are you doing today? How is your podcast coming along? I am Chris, and I am from the original Chris and Christine Show podcast. You can find out every single thing you want to know about that show on and over at the website, which is chrisandchristineshow.com. And I put a link to it into the show notes of every single episode. At least I think I got it on every single episode, but go ahead and double check. Uh, the show notes of this episode for sure should have a link to that and show notes are great you can put links to things you can put uh you know if you do a website maybe you can put that in there or maybe even a youtube channel you can put the link to the video of the podcast episode in the show notes that makes it very interesting and very easy to do really so here on podtastic audio we are doing this entire show live and what i mean by live is i mean i'm doing this entire thing in one full take from the sound effects to the music to the intro dude we are all doing this in one exact single show episode now there's a couple reasons why i'm doing this like this today one well why not if i can do it if you can do things live in one take and make it sound great then go right ahead but i know not everybody can pull off an entire episode in one shot like this in one take we always trip over words or fumble with our notes or figure out what's going on. If you have a guest interview that perhaps you maybe recorded previously and you got to insert it later in the episode, I've done that. And that makes things very easy to do. In fact, I love podcasting. I love helping you podcast. And here on today in this episode, we're actually going to play a little game. You know, games are always fun to do with your audience. And then hey, today, what I'm going to talk about is guest interviews because it seems like everybody who thinks they got a podcast, they have to automatically do guest interviews. And for the record, you do not. You can always do a solo show like I'm doing today. But when it comes to guest interviews, one thing I always talk about is that I love good audio. In fact, this is an audio podcast. So you are hearing this episode right now in your earbuds or in your car or however you're listening to the show. You're physically listening to this thing, so you're not looking at anything. Like, I don't know who actually looks at their podcast player screen, like, while they're actually listening to the episode. It's like the same people, I would think, that if they push play on music, on a music player app, like, you may look at the screen to see, oh, what artist is this? Okay, great. Then the phone goes away, and you just listen to the music, and you just enjoy it. But I know a lot of people have always have said that they prefer to do podcast interviews with a guest via a camera or like a web chat or a Zoom call, uh, Google Meets or Google, what's the other one they have? I know there's Skype and then there's, uh, of course, Zoom and there's Squadcast. And I think almost all of them today, except for Clean Feed, but I think almost all of the big players have some form of video incorporated into the web conferencing for interviews. And I know a lot of people have said it makes it super easy to have a good dialogue with your guest if you can physically see them and see what they're doing. But I always thought of it like, I've done that, but for me, it seems like it gets a little distracting because you're looking at what they're looking at and you're like, well, how's my hair? Or am I looking at them? I'm not, I'm not giving them eye contact. Do they think I'm being rude because I'm looking at something else? Are they, are they being rude by looking at something else? I mean, do I'm staring at their screen and like, like, what am I seeing right now? They look kind of weird. Like they got something going on in the background and, and what is that on their desk? And why is there a microphone that or this or what? I, I, for me, I just get kind of distracted looking at the things. It's almost like the reason why when you read a book, like a real, a big book, like say a Stephen King novel, you don't see any pictures in a book like that, you know, because it, it makes you think about it. You know, it's a theater of the mind. Which is essentially what a podcast really is, is that what I'm what I'm playing for you, you can't physically see. But just say, for example, if I played this clip for you right here. I'll be back. What do you think of? Did you think of the Terminator? Because that's what it's from. So it's theater of the mind. You didn't see it, 
but I played it for you in your mind automatically put the image in your head of what we, what it was. So when it comes to podcast interviews, there are many people, like I said, that say they absolutely have to have it done video only. They can't even imagine doing an interview like any other way. And I think like, have you ever had a phone call before? Have you ever talked on the phone? I don't, I don't know. I mean, it kind of blows my mind that people refuse to do an interview unless they can't physically see the other person. Now, today is a very fun day because I'm going to play two sample clips. Both of these are from the Chris and Christine show. Now, of these two sample clips, one of them was recorded in-house here in the same room. We're talking the guest was live in the same room with us. And the other one was done afar. Now, it's up to you to decide which clip was which. Because one thing I always hear is that you can't have good dialogue with a with a guest if you can't physically see them. Or could you? So I've got two clips here. They sound very similar. So you have to figure out which one is which. So here is the very first clip. Here's clip number one. The art of persuasion and stuff like that. Oh, like, like the art of the deal, huh? Check that out. Salesman. <laughs> like, um... Like ethos, logos, like stuff like that, and oh, like pretty much like those. Yes. Okay. Yes. There Thanos. You go. Uh, <laughs> <was everyone? laughs> I don't get to get the stones. That's all I know. You know. <laughs> <laughs> You're too much tonight. They, oh my god. <laughs> anyway, we just can't with but you tonight. He was a pretty cool professor. That's um, cool. Yeah, he was pretty chill, laid back. My biology one is the exact opposite. I can't stand him. But biology? He's pretty strict. Yeah. Like, well, uh, my my lab, he was super chill. Yeah. But my lecture, he's he just takes his life a little bit too seriously. His own life? His own. I don't know. Like, I really don't. I don't. I think he cares a little bit too much about biology to the point that it's concerning. Well, was that recorded here locally or was that recorded over the Internet with a remote guest? So here is clip number two. I just go sit in the front sitting room on one of the other chairs by myself in the dark because there's not room for me and I'm not going to push my way in. So Right. Yeah. And they don't know that you they figure you don't want to watch the movie. Right. And I'm sitting over there <laughs> pouting no like exactly. I just wish that yes, totally. Oh my god. Somebody is gonna listen to this and they're gonna say that's what's happening in my house. And they're going to walk in and they're going to be, you know what we need to do? We need to buy a bigger couch. Yeah. I'll put links to all the local furniture places in the show notes. Definitely. <laughs> but it is, it's the same. It's very similar to like, you know, it's the process of creating your own space for the new family, the new unit. Right. And, you know, the same thing happens with traditions over time. You know, it changes a little bit. So that was the second clip. Now, both Guests were on the Chris and Christine show in the last couple of months ago. So you have to decide which of those two clips were actually recorded locally and which one of them was recorded far away. Yeah, I know both clips sound very, very similar. It's very hard to tell. Was it clip number one or was it clip number two? That's the whole point. It's very hard to really tell the difference between somebody sitting here in the same room with you or somebody far away. Now, to be honest, one of them was recorded via clean feed, and I'm using clean feed right now to conduct this entire episode live in one full take. So I love using clean feed. The downside to it, there's absolutely no video component with it, but you can use it with any video platform you want, whether it's with, I don't know, Zoom or Squadcast or StreamYard or even FaceTime or Google Meet, whatever those ones you want to use, you can still use it and record the audio exclusively with clean feed. You just have to make sure you mute all the microphone features on those video conferencing tools and you can have a side-by-side. -side. You can have, you know, the clean feed picking up all the audio and of course the video stream there just so you can see the other person. It totally can work like that if you absolutely have to have video to see your guest. And from hearing those clips, does it sound like you really need it? Not really. It's not 100%. You actually have to have video to actually have a good conversation with the other person. 
before I tell you who the correct answer is, like who was actually here in studio and who was actually, you know, from afar, is that when you do a podcast and you do have a guest on your show, when you're trying to figure out which guest to really bring on your show, there's a couple of things you probably should do first. Now, we are guilty of not doing all of these things correctly because we've had some bad guests in the past, let me tell you. But they've had some good ones too, so not all bad, but... You should probably do a little research on the guest, not so much on like who their dog's favorite type of food is, you know, not that deep of research I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is you should probably find out if this person has been on other podcasts and if they have, go listen to those shows, figure out what they sound like. How do they sound great? Do they sound like crap? Um, Just get a feeling for them. Also. It's probably best to find out if they have proper equipment because if they're coming in on a phone or just a phone line or something or whatever, find out what kind of gear they have so you can adjust your podcast accordingly. You really hope for them to have the best equipment possible because if they come in on really good audio equipment and they sound really good from other shows you've heard them, then chances are they're going to sound great. But there's not a guarantee because if you heard them on another show, the other show could have edited that show to make them sound great. So they could have been really flat and boring and they could have taken like, you know, long pauses between every word they said. I mean, the other podcast could easily have cleaned that up, make it sound great. Um, A number of things, but try to make sure that they sound entertaining. They sound great. They've got the right equipment. And also too, secondly, you have to make sure that this person you're bringing on is a good fit for your show. Recently on the Chris and Christine show, I told Christine that like, instead of just inviting anybody on with a pulse, I'm going to go through and actually figure out that person is a good fit for our brand and for our show being very, very narrow. And when Christine got back to me on the actual schedule, because she had to rearrange your entire schedule for the upcoming guest interviews we had, because we had a lot of guests that want to be on our show. And so I just told them, hang on, we're working on the calendar. As soon as we got to figure it out, we'll send you the invite and you can pick the day that you want to be on the show. Because we use Calendly for all that. We use Calendly for this show. Uh, We use Calendly for that show. The way Calendly works is that it's a free account you can get. We have a paid version. But on the Calendly free version, you can, you know, create the days that you're available, the times that you're available. You send that link out to your guest. So the only, the guest was only going to see the times that are available for us. So when we created our uh, Calendly availability, some of the guests came back with, oh, well, we're not available during those times. Can you make it during this time instead? And I had to tell them, no. Like, we are both working during the week. Uh, Christine's working a lot. I'm working a lot. And there's absolutely nobody here to actually do the interview. (laughs) If you want to be on the show, nobody could do it. Uh, Maybe our Clover, our dog, could probably do the interview for you if you want to do that. She's the only one here. So uh, basically, I'd tell her, like, that's the way it is. Pick those days. And I had to put my foot down. Well, the way I look at it is like, you know what? We do not need to have a guest on our podcast. It's fun. We've had lots of guests on the podcast, and it makes it very easy to do the show. And it's great. We make them sound great. For the most part, we've had some people come in on bad equipment or whatever, but you got to do what you got to do, you know? I do my best to come fix some of that stuff. I mean, I'm not a miracle worker here, you know? But uh, what I'm saying is that we don't have to have a guest. We can do without a guest. So the way I look at it is like this is like, if you can't make our time schedule, if you can't make it on our show with the times that we have put in place, then what do you want us to do? Because we're not, we're not going to bend over backwards for you. I'm sorry. We're just not. So we have other things going on. And like I say, we don't have to have a guest. We don't have to have you on the show. So they, I think it was like a privilege. I know some shows see it the other way around. They, they see their guests as like goddesses or gods or whatever. Like, oh my God, I got the guest on. I will take a day off of work to interview this guest. I got to do everything possible. And so you do all that stuff. And then the guest calls in and say, or doesn't call in at all. The guest never shows up. Like a total no show. Then you feel kind of stupid because here you took time off work to interview this guest who you think would be an important part of your show. turns out they really weren't. It turns out they just, you know, didn't even show up. And I think like, who cares? They don't show up. Great. 
move on to the next, you know, whatever, you know, who, who gives a crap, you know, because they missed out. They had the opportunity to be on your show. And if they, I've had some no shows on the Chris and Christine show. Unfortunately, you know, fortunately, I should say, I've never had a no show on this show. Everybody who said they were going to be here was here at the exact time I sent the link. They came in. Everything's been great. Thank you so much to all my previous guests. I love all of you for showing up like you're supposed to. But it does happen from time to time. So what do you do when a guest doesn't show up? You get mad. You get frustrated. But uh, I look at it as like I give them like 15 minutes, 20 minutes past the hour whenever I said the time to be at. And I might send them an email message, whatever messaging service I use to talk to them. I would write them a message and say, hey, I thought we had an appointment today. Are you coming on or not? If you're not coming on, I'm going to give you the next 15 minutes for right now. If you don't make it, well, that's tough luck. It's news you lose. <laughs> I guess I'm moving on because I got better things to do with my day than sit around and wait for a guest to maybe show up or not show up. So what makes an engaging, entertaining, fun, you know, value bringing guest to your podcast? Well, you like to figure that out for yourself because whatever your show is, whatever niche you're in, whatever your topic your podcast is about, you probably want to find people similar to that niche, similar to that topic. It's okay to branch out a little bit, but let's just say that you are a podcast about flowers and roses and gardening, and you're going to bring in a true crime author onto the show doesn't really match up you know what i'm saying so just because they might be a big author like say stephen king was uh you're gonna get stephen king on your show that sounds great but your show doesn't align with somebody like that so i would pass on that like i would pass on a big name celebrity interview if they did not bring value to my podcast or even align with the podcast itself it just doesn't make any sense no matter who how big the name is if they don't bring any value to your show, it's worthless. Okay, so going back to the beginning of the episode, you try to figure out which guest was where. Was it clip number one? And like oh, pretty much like those? Yes. Okay. Yes. Thanos. Uh, was your one? <laughs> <laughs> I don't even get the stones. That's all I know, you know. <laughs> You're too much today. Or was it clip number two? Right. Yeah. And they don't know that you, they figure you don't want to watch the movie. Right. And I'm sitting over there pouting. No like, exactly. I just wish that, yes, totally. Oh my God. Somebody is going to listen to this and they're going to say, that's what's happening in my house. And they're going to walk in and they're going to be, you know what we need to do? We need to buy a bigger couch. <laughs> Okay, so was it number one or was it number two, the person that was live in studio right here in the same room with us? If you guessed clip number one, you'd be right. Yes, clip number one was actually recorded live right here in the same room with all three of us right here podcasting in the same room all together. And let me tell you, if you ever have a chance to interview a podcast guest in person, take it. I'm saying you better take it. It is gold. It is way better than Zoom. It is way better than any other kind of video conferencing. It's way better even than clean feed. It's way better than anything because everything happens live. And there's a chemistry in the room that you feel. There's an energy right there. It is the best way to do an interview has always got to be in person. That's what I've always said because uh, nothing else comes close. So yeah, clip number one, we actually had um, April was here in the studio live and we did the entire recording right here. It was fantastic. Now clip number two was also done via clean feel like we're doing right here. And um, it was a fun episode. Uh, we did everything. I don't remember where a guest was located actually, but I do know that uh, sounded very good. I was listening to it. I was like, yeah. I mean, it's very hard to tell which one is which because they both sound like they very possibly could be right here in the same room. And that's the beauty of having an audio podcast versus a Zoom show or a Squadcast show or a, you know any of those other kind of shows where it's like a whole video style show. When you do a show like this, it feels, to the least of the listener, 
they don't know the difference whether or not it was recorded here or recorded outside the room. That's the whole entire point. It's theater of the mind that you give your audience when they hear your podcast. So I want to say thank you once again for being over here in Podtastic Audio. And if you have any questions or concerns or you want to maybe uh, you know hit me up on email or social media, all that information is located in the show notes of this episode. Of course, my website is podtasticaudio.com. And you keep on making your amazing podcast with your awesome audio. And I'll talk to you next time.